Yes, hello, welcome back to World's Strictest Teachers, or That'll Teach Them, whatever you want to call it. Today we're going to be going backwards. We're doing it in a weird order. Don't ask me why, just have. Sue me. Today we're going to be watching episode one, and that's the moment when they all arrive at the school and have the head shaved and all that. But before we get into the video, if you could hit the like button and subscribe, that'd be absolutely fantastic. 46.3% of you haven't subscribed, you losers. So, subscribe, please. Cheers. One simple principle underpinned 1950s grammar schools. Sexism. Teaching boys and girls separately. Coming at it from a different angle. 15 boys and 15 girls are going back in time to experience 1950s grammar school education. And what's he turned up wearing? He looks like he's about to rob a bank on GTA with that sort of outfit and then just duffel bag. Here we are, just off to school with me. Duffel bag. Girls are really quite nasty and bitchy. Boys kind of like to, to test sort of how far they can push the teachers. Girls are good at shopping and boys are good at map reading. <laughs> oh, okay, I didn't realise that they were taking their opinions back to the 1950s as well. Girls like shopping. <sighs> Boys like map reading. Do we? Do we? Do we like map reading? We were so good at map reading that they invented the sat nav. Looks like a young Boris Johnson does that one, doesn't he? Spouting his sexism. The school rules dictate they may not come within six inches of each other. Six inches? Try standing two metres away from people. That's difficult enough. Six inches is nothing. But why is it six inches? That's a strange sort of measurement, isn't it? Um, that's millimetres. Do we have any inches? Oh, hello. That's si That's six inches. That ruler. I mean, you're getting pretty close if <laughs> if you're only that far away from each other. What's the point? If it's only going to be six inches, then don't have, don't bother having a distance. The only time you're getting that close to someone is if you're getting off of them. And even still, you know, it'd be a little bit closer than that. Maybe that's what the rule is then. Don't get off with anyone. Just say that. Make it easier. Forget the ruler. Some of you are scruffy beyond belief. We do not accept scruffiness at Charles Darwin Grammar. <laughs> I love how they've not sort of alluded to who the scruffy one is. They've got right in his face. You're the scruffy one, mate. What about you here, okay? Let's get a close-up on him. Let's fill the screen up with his scruffy face. It's nice of him. It is nice of him to just highlight the scruffy ones. I think we'll make sure that this is a really short haircut. Come on. I think that's fine. A little we less weight on the head. Perhaps your brain will be a little bit more efficient now. Ooh. He's getting a little bit ratty early on. He's getting digging into him already. Under the school rules, 21st century luxuries like deodorant, makeup, and chocolate are all banned. Oh my god, they've hid Kit Kats inside the Monopoly box. I mean, that is good thinking, to be fair. That is good thinking. No one's going to find the Kit Kats in there, surely. There's a telltale bar of chocolate under Philip Donald's bed. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Donald. Oh, who's put that there? He's put. Like that chocolate bar under my bed. Ooh, where's that come from? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he's giving himself away there, isn't he? It's all just come out. Everything's just fallen out there. Just excreting chocolate out of his system. With 20 years' experience of devious teenagers, she has a nose for trouble. How dare they think that they can get one over me? This is ridiculous. Wait, is that deodorant or something they've hidden there? They have as well. How do you hide deodorant inside your, your teddy bear? And how did she find it as well? That's that's the weirdest thing here. Oh my goodness me. What is it? Uh, no, I it's didn't. a catapult. It belongs to the oh, boys. Right. Hang on, why are they sifting through the pants drawer? What's, what's going on there then? Why are they going through all the girls' pants? I don't know why we're seeing 16 year olds. Pants here, this is weird. Can we move on? After a successful raid, Matron summons the girls back in. A successful raid? You're acting like it's a drugs raid. Bang! Coming in! I found the secret stash of Kit Kats. Careful before they flush it down the toilet. It's not a drugs raid, is it? <laughs> I mean, like, why is it? Why are you call it a raid? You found some deodorant in a teddy bear. Lock her up. And a bit of chewing gum as well, just a little bit there. <laughs> Honestly, if she doesn't get sponsored by Orbit after this, then she's not played the cards right. Vicky will really miss chocolate. That will be one of the things she will definitely miss. I guess it's a girl's thing. It must be a girl's thing. Sorry, wait, wait. Since when is chocolate a girl's thing? You've clearly never had a Yorkie, have you? Get a Yorkie down you. Or don't, actually. You know, it's just, just for men. Men like me. <laughs> I miss the days of, of sexist Yorkies. It's annoying. I'll often get phone calls from her saying, are you coming back now? Can you stop and get some chocolate? Oh, oh you filthy pig. It's like a female Augustus Gloop. 
Don't want to see that, Vicky. Close your mouth. Washed, fed and watered, the pupils head off to class. The girls are the first to get their exam results. OK, so basically they had to do some exams. They sat them on the first day just to sort of gauge whereabouts they are in their education. And I um, don't think it's gone so well. I almost gave up the will to live as I marked these papers. <laughs> Two out of 20 is not a laughing matter. I don't know, it's quite funny, I suppose. Two out of 20. That is, what, 10%? Better than 0%, isn't it? Take the positives from it. Take the positives. Get your head out of your hands. I sincerely doubt there's a brain big enough in there to weigh it down to that extent that it needs propping up. Ooh, he's lost his rag, hasn't he? Ooh, he's getting angry now. Someone's got a bit rattled, haven't they, over the exam grades. Ooh, can't you handle it? Not sure why he's wearing a lab coat either. Do you know what I mean? A bit pretentious. I mean, you're barely a scientist, are you? Looks more like a butcher. The result of your test, would you like to please read it to the group? Zero out of 20. OK, maybe she has got a small brain then. You've got to applaud that, haven't you? Fair play. Particularly if she's put, spent some time on that as well. You're an idiot! A numbskull! A fool! A little bit harsh. If you said that nowadays, you'd get the sack, wouldn't you? If you called one of your students an idiot or a numbskull, you would get sacked nowadays, I think. Which is a shame. I think teachers should be allowed to verbally abuse the students a bit more, you know? Bring it back. Come on. We have in the tank is a large piece of meat. Oh, well done. Someone's got a pair of eyes. Yeah, Pick up a handful of maggots, and I then want those maggots on the meat. You want maggots on your meat, do you? OK. Interesting. No, each each to their own, mate. Each to their own. You know I mean, we're all into all into different things. What a waste of meat as well. What a waste. If you're gonna waste it like this, get a little slice of bacon or something like that. Don't get half a cow. When your husband comes home from work, he does not want anything to have touched that food other than your beautiful hands. Bit weird, mate. Do you know what I mean, what's beautiful hands? What are you talking about? Mm, he's one to keep an eye on. Bold of you to assume the lover husband as well. That's that's an interesting assumption. Maybe the lover wife. Fifty years ago, singing was an accepted part of the school curriculum. Was it singing uh, on the curriculum? You got graded in singing, did you? I'd probably got an A star, I reckon. <laughs> We've all seen the talents on these videos. We have. We have. It just comes naturally to me vocally. Oh, oh, your turn. Oh. Again, again. Uh... He thinks he's Gary Barlow on the piano, doesn't he? Giving it all that sort of, oh yeah, I'm not even looking at the piano, but I'm singing as well. Come on, you're not Gary Barlow. <laughs> what's all the ho 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 about? You're not Santa. What's what's this? A bit early for that. Oh, no, 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 no. oh for goodness sake. I don't know the words, sir. We have just rehearsed this for the last 35 minutes. Oh, he's lost his head again. That's interesting. He's gone as well. Still needs to thank a management, doesn't he? Still needs to speak to somebody. Can we get you something organised, please, Mr Stanley? And you still do not know the words? No, sir, I don't. You are stupid. Go and sit down. Or maybe you're not a very good teacher. One of the two. Don't blame it on the student. Take some responsibility, Mr Stanley. <laughs> don't you dare wolf whistle in my class, Victoria Buxton. Get out at once. Oh, he's off again. Guys, not not just with the boys now, he's chatting to the girls as well. What's he like? Bit of equality though, good to see it. What's wrong with a bit of whistling as well? Surely it's music. That's that's when you need the sounds and the noises and whistles. It's good to see that finally the girls are wolf whistling. Do you know what I mean? Like that it's annoyed me that it's it's always guys that do it to women. Now it's the other way around. We're getting somewhere in society. Thank you. That is progress towards equality. Detention awaits Vicky Buxton. But for now, she's going to stand and look at a wall. I love that tactic. Just Can you just look at the wall, please? Because I don't want to see your face. Cheers. When it comes to physics, the girls are astronomically ignorant. How long does it take the Earth to go around the sun? 24 hours. Wrong! 24 hours? 24 hours for the Earth to go around the sun? <laughs> So we're moving quick, aren't we? Jesus Christ, 24 hours. How, do you realise how big the sun is? The sun, 24 hours? Oh, get a grip. After being thrown out of music and receiving a number of detentions, the headmaster has summoned her to his study to sing the school song. Oh, he's getting a private concert by Vicky Buxton. He's sat there like a Simon Cowell about to judge her. 
Do you know what, Vicky? I didn't like it. I loved it. And we know the journey is a long one where only the strong one can ever win the prize. And make <laughs> he's got into this a little bit much now, isn't he? He thinks he's leading an orchestra here, doesn't he? It's just one person. Just one person singing, mate. You don't need to do this. What's that doing? You can tell he's been on the booze this morning, can't you, honestly? Empty glasses in the background. Says it all. Stay beside the solemn super-sent fortis and me. Wow, that is very, very good. Oh, he's impressed. He liked that. You're through to boot camp, Vicky. Well done. It was in tune without a piano. Um, I just have to speak to Mr Stanley about your voice. I think we have to get you into the choir. He's like a young Louis Walsh, isn't he? You look like a pop star. You sound like a pop star. We'll get you in the choir, Ricky. That's, that's the Louis Walsh impression. There you go. It's not great, is it? It's not great. The boys of Beagle Dorm have already been caught with 21st century contraband. Cheeky scouser Luke Mills even has a mobile phone. He's brought a phone. How has he got a phone in there with him? He's there to call off his mates. Just, just normal for him, isn't it? He's just in a different setting. He still got his mobile phone. Yeah, you're right. What are you up to? You want to go Xbox tonight, yeah? Pro clubs. I mean, how did he think he wasn't going to get found out? Oh, I did not know that was there, sir. Oh. <laughs> He wasn't hiding it, now he lost it. And you found it for him, so thank you. He definitely wasn't trying to hide it from you. No, 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 no. It was lost and fell out of his bag. I don't know why he should have pulled the wool over their eyes like that. They're not going to fall for it, are they? My name's Luke Mills, and I'd confidently say I'm the smartest person in my school. And I can confidently say you're talking out your ass. People here respect me from an academic point of view. Do they? Says who? You? You're saying that other people respect you? Mm, okay. I'll take your word for it then, yeah? I've never met a teacher today that doesn't like me. I've definitely got the gift of the gab. He sounds like a contestant on The Apprentice. Just just talking rubbish. Just talking absolute rubbish. I'll make you ten times your money back on your investment, Lord Sugar. I will ten times in six months. Despite your protestations, you are in serious breach of these school rules. Right, so that's one teacher that doesn't like you. Go on. The boys and girls are going head to head in a debating competition. Oh, debating competition, that old chestnut. They used to do that in our school. They used to be like, um, I don't know what you'd call it, like a little club thing where you go debate. Oh, we're off to go debate another school today. All right, are yeah. you? Okay, well, I'm off home, so enjoy that. Yeah, it never really appealed to me, so just go have an argument with another school for an hour. No, I'm alright, thanks. I'll just, just go home. Got things to do. But, you know, each to their own. The balloon debate works on the premise that there is a hot air balloon and it's going down. And in this balloon are four famous people from history and only one can survive. Right, well, in what realm would this ever happen? It wouldn't, would it? No, there wouldn't be just four random people from random parts of history in one hot air balloon. It's unrealistic. I mean, who are these four people anyway that are in the hot air balloon? Today I'm going to be telling you about Mr William Shakespeare and he's the most famous and the best most playwright in the world yeah but all he did was write some plays andrew lloyd webber's done that i don't think i'd be saving him from heart air balloon accident to be honest with you i mean i'd, I'd be too busy saving myself if we're only saving one of us then it's me thanks right see you later william bye bye i don't even get at what point i find myself in a hot air balloon with william shakespeare it just wouldn't happen wouldn't happen unrealistic albert einstein was the greatest man in the world he dedicated more of his life to science than anybody else. No, overrated. Not having it. He came up with a bunch of theories. Well done. I can come up with theories, mate. How many of them were actually proved correct? The guy didn't get out enough, did he? He just sat around in his lab all day, like, oh, I've come up with another theory. And, like, get back to us when you've got some facts, mate. No, overrated. Everybody knows the tune of I Vote Start which is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Right, okay, so not exactly one of the big tunes then, is it? I bet he didn't even get in the charts. So, you know, poor choice. Shouldn't have gone for him. Psychology, the most austere neurological science there is, and fathered mainly by who I'm studying today, Sigmund Freud. No, so I'm getting rid of him. Let's, let's, let's chuck him out of the hot air balloon, if anything. He's weighing us down. We'll have a heavier impact with him in here. Bang, see you later. The audience votes to eject one speaker from the balloon. The first person to be thrown out of our balloon is Einstein. Einstein's the first one out. <laughs> of all the people there, Einstein's the first one to be thrown out. Really? Oh, come on. Get rid of Freud and let's have Mozart. Let's let's throw him out as well. We can all write music. I mean, it's not that impressive. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Oh, come on. 
It's not the most inventive, is it? Very soon, it's a two-horse race between Philip Donald and Ashley Waters. So Sigmund Freud is going up against Shakespeare, basically. They're taking my advice, get rid of Mozart, waste of space, get rid of him. Shakespeare, I'm sure he could write me a lovely poem, but I would prefer someone who could get into my mind, tell me things that I've probably never heard before. Can Sigmund Freud do that? Can he get into your mind? Can he? I think you've a bit too much credit here. Out of your mouth would just come silence if we didn't have Shakespeare, because he created one third of our language. What? That's not strictly true, is it? I mean, he might have created a third of our language, but even still, we had language before Shakespeare. We'd still be able to communicate. You know, we were doing all right, weren't we? He just added more words, didn't he? He didn't invent the English language. So that's sort of a flawed point, but go on. I don't think that that's a sound argument based upon who survives this savage balloon dropping. Savage balloon dropping? Ironically, I'm pretty sure Shakespeare invented the word savage, didn't he? I think. So if anything, he's helping her out here. With 12 votes, Shakespeare. No. With 16 votes, Freud. How has Freud won that? How has he won that? A psychologist has beaten all of them. How? It's a fix, is that? It's a fix. Voter fraud. But Luke Mills has got his own problems. After pretending he forgot to hand in his mobile phone, he's been summoned to see the headmaster. Ah, this'll go well though, won't it? Let's see if he can try and worm his way out of this with his gift of the gab. Oh yeah. Let's see. I don't think there is a smidgen, an iota, a kernel of truth in what you've said. Here we go. I mean, the head teacher's off on one ear, isn't he? He's, he's gonna lose his rag again. And he's right, to be fair, it's a lot of rubbish. It is a lot of rubbish. He's found him out. Can I have the truth, please, Mills? I took out my phone in full intention to use my mobile phone. Thank you, Mills. Thank you very much indeed. He's got the answer he wanted, hasn't he, now? Uh, what's the punishment gonna be? What sort of punishment is going to be handed out here? Is he gonna be expelled? Perhaps. Oh. Copy out sections from the Venerable Bede's Ecclesiastical History. Have you read this book? No, sir. Well, you're about to. Oh, a bit sassy. A bit sassy there for the head teacher. I wonder if he's read the book. Probably not, because he had to check what it was called. wonder what it's about. It sounds like an interesting book. The headmaster gives Mills two hours detention and instructs him to go to bed at eight o'clock. <laughs> what sort of punishment is that? You're going to go to bed early. You have to go to bed at eight. Your punishment is extra sleep. Yes. Very naughty, so sleep more. I don't know. It's a strange one, is that, isn't it? I always think it's a strange one. It's now ten. What am I talking about? It is not a question! <laughs> oh, this is going to end well, isn't it? Probably best not to do an impersonation of him when he's looking through the window. Oh, yeah. And definitely don't go shouting about it as well. That's that's the worst bit. He's shouting to do the impersonation. Or oh, matron, matron, smile! Hello. I thought you were meant to be in bed. I mean, he's in his bedroom, if that's near enough. Does that count, does it? I mean, how do you expect him to be able to go to bed when there's all the uh, guys in the room and the lights on? Like, <laughs> how do you expect him to sleep like that? Did you not understand my instructions when I said to you earlier today, after prep, you were to go to bed? Why aren't you in bed? Well, he sort of is. He's on his bed, at least. That's a starting point. Maybe he doesn't want the extra two hours sleep. Oh, I'm screwed. And there we have it, another episode of That'll Teach Him Over. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this. I'd really appreciate it though if you could hit the like button and subscribe if you are new to the channel. That would be absolutely fantastic and really helps the channel out, I really do appreciate it. Also go check out my Twitter and Instagram, at JustAdOfficial, the links are in the description below. Please go ahead and follow me there to find updates as to when the new videos go out. And if you want to be, you can also become a Patreon as well. Um, the link to that is in the description below too. Um, there's currently 17 videos out there for you to go watch. And you just sign up to it and get a video out pretty much every single week. An extra video. There's currently 17 videos which you'll also have access to as well. And that would really help support myself out in trying to turn this from a full-time hobby into a full-time job. So if you guys want to go ahead and do that, that'd be really appreciated as well. Thank you to everyone who is currently a patron. It really does mean a lot. Thank you. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.